Well, we can't wait any longer. We should begin the experiment. With no porters, no assistance. This endeavor's been a farce from the start, Revis. Now it's a doomed one. Well, here's a turn of luck. It's me, Revis. You helped me out of a scrape in Nysis some time back, remember? Quamamine, tonal resonator, uh, devoured bard, good times. Anyway, here we go again. You, me, and an experiment going poorly. House Telvani is funding a practical test of my latest invention, the Phantasmal Sensor. It exercises spirits, ghosts, and other spectral beings near instantaneously. The unquiet dead claim countless lives each season, but no longer. The porters and assistants I contracted with have been waylaid in Narcissus, some manner of food poisoning. I'm desperate for an extra set of eyes and hands to help with labor and preparations. Nothing dangerous, I assure you. Oh, I'm so relieved you agreed to help. Before you arrived, I feared my overseers at House Telvani really might... <clears throat> no matter. Tiris and I already set up a small field laboratory in the ruined Veyond. Meet us inside and we'll get started. Uh, certainly. It's a wedding of Barrelzar's theories on the interactions of tonal and spectral forces with a resonance housing of my own design. Activating it should render any ghosts in proximity completely mute. A clever bit of engineering, I suppose. What? No, no, I'm extremely excited about it. My superiors in Telnaga called it a product of minor interest. Believe me when I say that's as robust an endorsement as I'm ever likely to earn. If the Telvani Council thinks it's worthwhile, so do I. Tiris is a junior Oathman of House Telvani. At this point in his education, he's obliged to accompany a spellwright like myself on a few field excursions. Sort of an apprenticeship. Honestly, in his case, it's just a formality. Tiris is an incredible talent, of the sort that only appears once in a generation. What's more, his family is extremely well-connected. He lives the Telvani Creed effortlessly. I wager he'll be Archmagister one day. Really putting me on the spot, aren't you? There are aspects of Telvani culture I find abhorrent. The practice of slavery being chief among them. We do what we can. When the only alternative is exile, it's complicated. When you're on a mission to quiet down restless ghosts, you go where the restless ghosts are. Angry spirits pile up in these alien ruins like weevils in a hollow log. Vec only knows why. I've never taken much interest in alien history. In Morrowind? Ha! Huh, I wouldn't think of it. Silencing an ancestor is blasphemous, even if some of them deserve it. My Aunt Cernsey can't let a visitation go by without complaining about her urn. We know you wanted purple. Get over it already, right? Taking assistance from random passers-by. The Magisters of the House will most certainly have opinions on this. This is easily the most important experiment in Revis's unremarkable career, and he's soliciting aid from random passers-by. Of course he is. It would be depressing if it wasn't so predictable. I am Tiris Terethi, firstborn son of Fothis Terethi, and adopted nephew to Magister Therana of Telbranora. I can tell by your vacant expression you are not well acquainted with the current affairs of House Telvani. No great surprise there. Hmm, I see. Some minor errand, I assume. Hmm, the house does not make a habit of employing imbeciles. You must have some talent. I take some comfort in that. I often ask myself the same thing. The Telvani Council insists that prodigies such as I leave Morrowind for a time to experience... whatever this is. It makes us more worldly, I suppose. An insufferable waste of time, if you ask me. Well, <laughs> that's a charitable way to put it. Technically, I am Revis's student, but he's taught me very little beyond how to fumble aimlessly from one disaster to another. I can't wait for this to be over.
think of it, Revit. A crumbling ruin is an apt place for your final experiment with House Telvani. Finally, we can get started. There's a lot riding on this experiment's success. So yes, let's all stay focused and diligent. And also very, very careful. I need you to paint some stabilizing runes around the area to reinforce the sensor's magics. They're not all that elaborate, I promise. But do be mindful. I'm not leaving anything to chance this time. Here are the materials in a template. I infused the paint with ground soul gems to reinforce the rune's potency. At great personal expense, I might add. Right, Tyrus? There's no price too high for success. Try not to use it all, all right? I have a few more calibrations to attend to. As for Tyrus, he'll probably, you know, observe. For educational purposes. You can speak with him if you have any other questions. Set guide you, my friend. Remember. Precision is of the utmost importance, so no loafing or dawdling, you! Uh, I'm sorry. We're supposed to use harsh declaratives like that to motivate people. Are you? Yeah, I can tell you're motivated. Great, that's great. Bringing a book for travel is well worth the pack space. Shame they're so heavy. Soul gem infused runes slathered on alien walls. The poor condition of the stone combined with imprecise template virtually guarantees a lack of efficacy. What is Revis, an amateur? What am I saying? Of course he is. Ah, finally. Someone else makes an astute observation. Congratulations. You've just become the second smartest person in the room. The runes Revis wants painted will have, at most, a negligible impact. They're essentially just expensive vandalism. Ugh, don't be thick. I have nothing to learn from the likes of Revis Demnevani. This is a mere formality. When I ascend to the Council, I will make weeding out hedge mages like Revis my first priority. Oh, yes. Revis knows where he stands with the Telvani Council. On a precipice, and after today's nonsense, he will finally fall off. Come agreeable. I didn't know you were interested in that genre. I'll have to remember that. Ah! 
Welcome back. The runes are in place, right? I'm anxious to begin the experiment. Excellent. By the three, can I just tell you how refreshing it is to hear a voice of support? Thank you. Now, the next step is a bit more complicated. I need you to assist me with a Phantasmal Sensor's kindling sequence. These magical pylons provide the key. Fair warning, they can be a bit unruly, but the fundamentals are sound. Spectral energy will pass between them freely, but sometimes the crystals dislodge. If that happens, I need you to reattune them. Just pay attention to the energies flowing between them. If no spectral motes pass through one of the pylons, you'll know that's the one that needs fixing. I should warn you, if you try to attune a functional pylon, you might feel a mild shock. It's nice to have a willing pair of hands to assist me. Tyrus seems well acquainted with instruments like these. He could make a real contribution if he wasn't so set on observing all the time. I wish I could convince him to help. Ah oh, well. Well, aren't you supposed to be helping Revis with this folly? No, a lot. I'd barely left the cradle when I erected my first arcane pylon. But if you're asking me to assist Revis in this buffoonery, I'd sooner put trousers on a Vardvark. It's just as fruitless, but infinitely more adorable. <laughs> I suppose that's your attempt at being clever. Very well, I'll rise to the bait. The sooner we're done with this, the better. Know this, however. I'll not employ his silly whacker hackwing methodology. Witness a true mage in action. If you're quite finished, Revis. Hmm. An artless configuration, to be sure. Balancing the crystal resonance is simple enough. There, a perfect calibration. Much good may it do you. It's working. Just a moment more and... What? Why isn't it... Good grief! Damn it all! I triple-checked the pylons last night. I field-tested the runes. I've read everything Baralzar's ever written aside from his fetching diary, and it still doesn't work. Still! Why won't it work? It needs to work! No. No! You followed my instructions to the letter, and I practically killed myself proving out the theories in my laboratory back home. Literally. My eyebrows only recently grew back. It can't just be bad luck. I must have missed something. Something in Veyond. Some arcane anomaly that disrupts the function of pylons. Of course, the ruin I choose to work in suffers from some heretofore unseen pylon scrambling hocus pocus. Just another day in the life of Revis Demnavani. Well, we need to find the source of the disturbance. Take Tyrus and explore the lower chambers. It shouldn't take him long to identify the culprit. Just make sure to keep him safe. If anything happens to him, my Kwama is well and truly cooked. Right. I'll stay here and inspect the instruments. Again. If I didn't find any flaws the first three times, I doubt I'll find any now. But who knows? Maybe Tyrus is right. Maybe this is just a huge waste of time. What do I think? What does that matter? The Telvani Council detests my work on Dwemer mechanics. They want nothing to do with my study of rare eggs. The Phantasmal Sensor is the only thing I've ever created that won their approval. Really that important? Well, of course it is. I'm a member of House Telvani for Vex's sake. If the Council drums me out, what would I do? Who would I share my theories with? No, once that door closes, it closes forever. It's unthinkable. Absolutely. Yes. Maybe. I don't know, but I have to try. Would I rather be poking around in a dwarven ruin, unraveling the mysteries of tonal architecture? Yes, but no one ever said arcane practice always leads to excitement. Well, let's get this farce underway. Oh, 
Our maps of Veyond didn't depict this tunnel. Vex head. Be on your guard. Trolls! Hideous savage beast! Keep that brute away from me! To run away. There, in the well, distance. Now I guess more you alien masonry. Maybe they should try that. Finally, no more mucking around the dirt like some clumsy salt rice farmer. There's a strange aura on the other side of this door. Can you feel it? Uh, what am I saying? Of now then, you can't. these Vala stones are clouded. Some manner of arcane erosion. They must be the source of Revis's trouble. It's an explosive burst of magicka, and draining their power is no small feat. Unless, of course, you happen to be me. Smash away, hero. And let's get out of this place. Tyrus, the interference. I think it may come from clouded... Vala stones? Indeed. The help and I already dealt with them. You're welcome. Oh, well, thank you. I... Wait. Does anyone else feel that? Intruders? Get out! Get out! A spirit! Stand back, both of you. It's time for a true test of the phantasmal sensor. Uh, get it away from me! B back, you creature! I mean it! Ah! Wait, Tyrus! No! Ah! Oblivion, take me! He's dead! Tyrus is dead! This is a catastrophe! What are we gonna do? I tried to use the phantasmal sensor to quiet that alien spectre, but Tyrus panicked and started to banish it with his own magic. His banishing spell mixed with the sensor's power and whoosh, snuffed out like a candle. I'm doomed! Just vanished. Yeah, sure, just vanished. To the afterlife! This is classic Revis, you know. I'm a pox. I'll just need a moment to think about what I'm going to tell the house about Tyrus. And the sensor, wherever it flew off to. What? What is happening to me? Hear him in my mind, haunting. I... I can't... Help me! Use the sensor! Tyrus... He's not gone after all. Please forgive me, Sarah. While I was wallowing in self-pity, you were out here trying to clean up my mess. And by the three, Tyrus still lives. Or exists at any rate. What happened when you found him? Along with the clouded Vala stones. Interesting. The sensor might have prompted some kind of animus inversion. Ah, uh, the specifics can wait. Whatever happened, he's still aware of his surroundings. He might be able to fix this. We? No, no, no. I've done enough damage. I'll come along, offer scholarly advice and such. But you're the only person I trust to see this through. The first step is finding Tyrus. His soul seems bound to the ruin, and these stones. The clouded Vala stones are sort of thickening the magical fabric of this place. A soul like Tyrus's would cause ripples. 
Allow me to make a small modification to the sensor. There. If you use it now, it should illuminate Tyrus's path. I've proven beyond shadow of a doubt that I can't be trusted with that thing. For anyone who is not me, using the sensor is quite simple. Activate it, and a moat of spectral energy should coast toward Tyrus. Just follow the moat. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Best to focus on navigating the ruin. I seriously doubt that Bayon's shown us all its nasty surprises. and more clouded Vala stones. By the three, were the aliens selling them wholesale? Ugh, I'll probably regret this, but I'll try to attune the stones. You push them out of position. Maybe that will set him free. No, not enough! I know that did not look like a success, but I think I know what's happening. These clouded Vala stones. The aliens wouldn't have carved imperfect stones in this quantity by accident. There's intention here. They're meant to attract spectral energy like moths to a flame. That's why we keep finding Tyrus among them. Well, it doesn't just yet. But we're definitely onto something. The sensor can banish the stones, and my attunement spell can stabilize them long enough to dislodge them safely. We... I mean you are one step closer to fixing this. You? What do you do now? Keep tracking Tyrus. I'll try to puzzle out a way to use the sensor and attunement spell to restore Tyrus's corporeal form. We have to move quickly, though. If we don't reach him soon, critical animus decay might set in. That's because it is bad. Let's pick up the pace, all right? It's Tyrus! Oh, I probably shouldn't be proud of that. It's so close! I think I know what's going on. 
Tyrus is trying to resist the pull of the clouded Vala stones, but his strength is waning. Luckily, he's running into these smaller stone clusters, sort of like falling out of a tree and hitting all the branches on the way down. I'm wagering there is a greater load of this clouded glass somewhere in the ruin. A stockpile or something that dwarfs these other Vala stones in size, potency, or both. Tyrus should eventually find himself there. I can't imagine it will be pleasant, but with enough of the clouded glass in one place, we might be able to create a large enough resonance to restore Tyrus's corporeal form. You using the phantasmal sensor, and me using the attunement spell. I have to. Without my attunement spell, the sensor could banish Tyrus for good. I can't hide from this forever. I am a mage. Hapless and clumsy, perhaps, but a mage all the same. I owe it to Tyrus, to you, and to myself to try. This plan will work, right? Of course it will work. Just follow that moat. I am. It might be a bit morbid, but all this dashing around and puzzle solving, it's why I love being a wizard. I'd nearly forgotten that with Tyrus and House Telvanni pushing me around. We all have to follow our bliss, right? Mine's in old ruins. Mercy. Tyrus is fading faster. Quickly, just smash these stones and we'll hope for the best. There. Now, use the sensor. We have to find the central load. It's not a cluster of glass. It's an entire well. All right, let's go over the plan. We were looking for a pile of clouded glass, and instead, we found a limitless font of unstable magicka. Shame we have to destroy it. But well, let's be honest, <laughs> I would have found a way to accidentally destroy it before long. Are you ready to save Tyrus? First, we need to replicate the original event. Aim the Phantasmal Sensor at him, and unleash its power. While you're doing that, I'll cast the Attunement Spell. Weaving the two together should dislodge his Animus and restore his corporeal form. Much less confident than you'd like. If it's any consolation, most Magisters aren't certain of a hypothesis until they test it. Our test just happens to have the potential for cataclysmic results. Discharging spells and jangling magic sensors in front of an unstable well could prove explosive, but nothing is certain. Magic is more art than science. At least that's what I tell myself in situations like this. Seven in ten? Give or take. You've faced worse odds before, though. Right? Come on, hero. Let's do some heroing. It's 
working! We did it! Tyrus, are you alright? Revis! I... I... I am alive! Oh, thank you! A.M.'s mercy, I thought I was dead! I never should have cast that! But the ghost was there and I just... just panicked! Oh, dear. Uh, there, there, Tyrus. Why don't we head back to camp, all right? Well, this is unexpected. I thought for sure he tried to strangle me or something. Let's make our way back to the surface. You! I owe you such an apology. I could see everything you and Revis did. No one... No one has ever looked out for me before. Thank you. Anyway, I'm writing the Magister straight away, Revis. You will receive accolades aplenty. Oh, that's a uh, very generous Tyrus. Thank you. Uh, I'll be sure to mention your role in my rescue too. The death of a Terethi is a valuable thing, especially one who will one day become a Magister. Well, this is unexpected. I'd resolved to spend the rest of my life in exile, but now Tyrus is singing my praises. Do you think he hit his head or something? I guess anyone can have a change of heart when they have a brush with fate like this. Hopefully Tyrus's testimonial will earn me some latitude with House Telvanni. Not enough to rise in rank, mind you, but enough to keep them off my back for a while. None of this would have been possible without you. Thank you, Sarah. Safe travels, my friend. And if you ever find yourself in Nisus, feel free to drop by. As soon as I can, yes. The sensor was always a means to an end. Tyrus's letter should give me the boost I need to continue my real work. Rare eggs, dwarven machines, vegetable conjuring, all the bizarre obsessions that House Telvanni scorned. Ha! No, no. I'm far too clumsy to evade the Telvanni Council's contempt for long. But we have to treasure the time we have, right? I'm sure I'll make some really worthy discoveries before they start nosing around in my work again. <laughs> By the three, this whole business really opened my eyes. I always thought true wizardry happened in the laboratories and libraries of Telnaga. But magic is messy. It's dangerous. A second's hesitation can mean death. Revis taught me that. How could it not? When faced with even the slightest peril, I panicked. Rather than listening to my teacher, I cast a spell that turned my animus inside out. An experience like that would change anyone. Then there's the matter of my rescue. Any other Telvani wizard would have left me there without a moment's hesitation. House politics are cruel, but when faced with the prospect of death or professional ruin, Revis saved me anyway. I can guarantee you, I would not have done the same. I will try. Members of House Telvani are stubborn, but true greatness comes from learning. This was a difficult but necessary lesson. <laughs> 